strange. Wow. Strange. <laughs> strange. Intel connection. London, Chalabi, MI-16, Iran, Channel Terrorism, funding connections, Persian Gulf Royals, the oil business, arms dealers, billionaires, with you. Steeler, billionaires. Steeler billionaires with golf connections and big yachts. One lost his son like Matt Damon in Syriana in the Saudi pool. He is Syrian Saudi, Syriana. He lives in London. He works for the Saudis. He is close to the British government and British arms dealers and Bob Bayer. Dennis Thatcher, R.S. Lady Thatcher. What does, do? what does human intelligence? And what it is, is it's a whole series of relationships predicated on long-standing friendships and I scratch your back, you scratch mine. Heads of terrorist organizations, shady guys. And he can go to them and he can... Heads of terrorist organizations, shady guys. And he can go to them. Tony Blair resists probe of Saudi corruption payments involving billionaires. Both Judith Miller and Robert Bayer knew beforehand of 9-11. Both were tied to the London Private Oil Arms Network. Which had corrupted Tony Blair? The oil business is the same business. Shady guys. And he can go to them and he can... Persian Gulf royalty on a first name basis. And, and billionaires you read about in the paper. Guys from the oil business, the arms business, the arms business. It's passing information to the Iranians. It's passing information to the Iranians. It's Leave the CIA. In the late 90s, leave the CIA. In the late 90s, uh, because he, you know there was a sort of dust up involving him in the National Security Council. He was accused uh, of a felony of uh, attempted murder of Saddam Hussein for some actions that took place during a coup uh, in Iraq in, in either 95 or 96. So he, he, he actually, so he. He, he actually Chalabi was an agent for him at one point. He um, accused um, of a felony of uh, attempted murder of Saddam Hussein for some actions that took place during a coup uh, in Iraq in, in either '95 or '96. And billionaires you read about in the paper, guys from the oil business, the, the arms business, the arms business, Persian Gulf royalty on a first name basis, and used. Um, of a felony of uh, attempted murder of Saddam Hussein for some actions that took place during a coup uh, in Iraq in, in either 95 or 96. It's incredibly <laughs> strange. 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 I'm not to have a moral judgment on them. Um, I, I think they're a fact of life and they exercise a tremendous amount of power. And I heard stories that would curl your hair. Truly, you'd have curly hair. and. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's just interesting, you know, that these men can represent inside one law firm. Um, they can represent uh, Gulf, like Saudi Arabia and an oil company and, you know, a military contractor and uh, be the private lawyer of a senator, you know, and it's one nexus point. And it's, a, it's just an interesting feature to Washington. An interesting um, I heard, feature. I heard a lot of stories about a man, actually, who... He's a, he's a well-known lawyer, but he, um, this is something that was said about him that's an amazing thing. He's a partner at one of the big firms, and it was said that if you wanted information about the Middle East, if you were, say, the Vice President of the United States, and you wanted information about the Middle East, you were better off going to this lawyer, one lawyer, than the entire CIA. Because he could make one phone call to some his client His information was better. His information was better. Now why was that? One lawyer. It was said by a bunch of different people to me that he was better connected in the Middle East and the entire Central Intelligence Agency. And what kinds of clients did he have? Middle Eastern countries or Every, oil companies yeah, or everybody. You know, everybody. You know I was yeah. and I he had a, he had all around the table all these investors. I mean multi billionaires from Saudi Arabia and Kuwait and Bahrain and
Well, um, there's an unhealthily close relationship between um, special interest money and uh, policy, let's say, or that... Um, Meaning that oil companies are dictating the foreign policy of America having to do with the Middle East? I, that would be one extrapolation. Uh, he crossed so many different worlds. He knows oil men, arms dealers. Uh, even, Persian, though, even though Persian, Chalabi was not in, in Iraq at the time? No. He was no. in London or yeah. somewhere? No. He was no. in London or yeah. somewhere? No. He was no. in London or yeah. somewhere? Multi-billionaires from Saudi Arabia and Kuwait and Bahrain? And, no. He was no. in London or yeah. somewhere? Multi-billionaires from Saudi Arabia and Kuwait and Bahrain? And... <laughs> system are you saying something's wrong here uh, yes yes I, I, I think I am I can't I don't want to duck that one the, and so what is it you're saying is wrong that I, too many pe powerful people are acting not in the national interest that's part of it I think that's part of it and I think it, I think that this Randy Cunningham is, is an example of something of a culture in Washington the congressman former Vietnam pilot who living on a yacht paid for by a military contractor, driving a Rolls Royce paid for by a military contractor, broad daylight, driving up to the hill, living in the Potomac Basin. No possible way this guy can afford this stuff. And yet no one's saying boo. And my well, no, they indicted him. Finally, but he was caught by a local reporter in San Diego, not by anybody here in the press corps, not by Washington. Oh, you mean they should have seen him and said, and, and, and the question should have come flying the out of his mouth should have when come a up. guy drives up in a Rolls Royce, Royce from his yacht yacht. called the Dinkster, and he's like on a congressman's salary. I just, yeah. why isn't that, how could that exist in broad daylight, I think is a valid question. And I think it's an interesting, you know, it's an interesting question. So that's about the corporate finance and, and bribes and corruption. When you talk and, I got a peek at your file. You're a good man. One whose experience is narrow and deep. Your entire career, you've been used. And probably never even known what for. I didn't used to need to know. Criminal this network is what it says innocent that you can't read. Innocent until investigated? It's mm -hmm. nice. It's got a nice ring to it. If anything happens to me or my family, an accident, an accusation, anything, then first your son will disappear. His body will never be found. Then your wife. Her body will never be found either. Now, this is guaranteed. I want to give a feeling of how much we, come, we have coming at us. And if we're involved with the spiritual practice, we want to make sure that our time, our energy, our focus is going in a direction where we're going to make the connection with what we've invested in. So in the same way our politics really confuse us, we should make sure in our spiritual groups or spiritual circles or what we're putting our heart towards that, that there's clarity there. And we should have evidence of this by noticing better personal relationships in our family, more ability to generate abundance, more balance, cheerfulness, happiness in the environment. These are indications that our leaders are leading us correctly. Now you can decide with what I just showed you how you want to believe, but I'm saying not to just throw it aside as something too scary to even consider, because something like Christianity, which is all about the resurrection, in order to do the greater things that Jesus said we do, we have to be bright and alert. 
and be able to be sharp and to kind of see a little bit more than what one would want to see when they want to just enjoy the benefits of being a Christian and saying, Jesus loves me, this I know, because the Bible told me so. And if we say, well, that's Christianity, and we never really exerted ourselves beyond uh, a second grade um, Sunday school lesson, well, of course it's not going to do that much. And then people like Joe Friendly is going to say that Christ uh, Christianity is just Judaism for dummies. But I was showing you that roll-in before about what I uh, got at the New York Public Library to say that there is a deep, deep wisdom in our spiritual traditions, but they can't be unlocked unless we're bright and alert, unless we're balanced, unless we have harmony with our families, and freedom to think and freedom to share. And the freedom that we use when we're using our free thinking and when we're sharing in the most transparent way that we can and encouraging others to do the same, even if they have a problem with us. Like I put on makeup for this show because somebody was griping that I don't wear makeup. And so, you know, Webster Tarpley used to say that I care too much about the little comments, but I always see everything as an indicator of something that I can take a look at. So if we use this freedom, that will be the way that we'll ensure that we have freedom. If we find ourselves in a group where we're only allowed to think one thing and not the other, or we find ourselves sort of addictively going down a certain path where we want the same old hits, the same old humor, uh, we're, not, we're not growing and the peace is really going to be secured in the growth. So this is Paula Gloria and this has been an episode of farther down a rather long rabbit hole and I've mixed a lot of metaphors here. I'm going to post it and I thank one of the one of my viewers for having turned me on to this. I hate to say it, I'm not much of a movie buff, so I never even saw that movie, Syriana, but I'm certainly aware that in the 9-11 We Are Change group, led by Alex Jones, I didn't like things that he was saying about the Bohemian Grove because I myself had been involved with uh, the Paul Lowe workshops. He was sort of, you know, at one time considered the protege of Osho. After I had sort of wanted to decondition myself from my transcendental meditation celibacy background, I decided a good dose of um, the teachings from the sex guru would be in order. And I could see how somebody with a camera and snapshots would go around and say that uh, I was some Illuminati or decadent just because I was at a clothing optional workshop. So I wasn't satisfied when Alex Jones talks about the satanic a church or what's anti-Christian because first, before you talk about what's anti-Christian, have you really commanded and understood what Christianity is and do you know what it means when Jesus said that he came not to change the covenant but to fulfill it? Do you even understand what a covenant is? Everyone runs around and says, rights, rights, human rights. You know, I have to have these rights. Well, says who? Who gave you the rights? How did you earn the rights? How did you ensure it? This is why Abraham went up to the mountain in the most heartbroken state you could possibly imagine, that he wanted that divine connection so much he was willing to sacrifice his son. So keeping that in mind, uh, if we find ourselves in a group that is restricting our thinking, just allow the heartbreak to take place and see where it takes you, because the divine connection, you don't want it to be blocked. And in order to make that connection, you need to exercise freedom. You need to demand it for yourself. And you certainly should be ready to give it to others when the time comes that they ask for that freedom. So again, thank you. This is Paula Gloria, and this is an episode of Farther Down the Rabbit Hole. So what you just saw was a group of people who are well taken, by, well taken care of by established media, unlike those of us in public access. And even though the New Age thing is to deny cultural backgrounds, and Alan Steinfeld and I practically split up over this, 
I, you know, he claims that all religion will be transcended in the in the age of Aquarius, or when the space people come down, or when we when we lift up our vibration to to connect with those of other planets. But I think it's a very handy reference point. Reference point. You can see I keep missing my words. It's it's very jarring to 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 see these kind of images. But I I want to say for the sake of um, all of those who've wrapped up their dream around mine in any way, shape, or form who have been inspired by me. Like when I lost my fortune in the cellular business, there were people who, um, who I directly encouraged to get into this investment. And although they collectively invested one-sixth of what I invested, as opposed to Molly's father, who lost $15 million worth of investors' money and $2 million was his wife's money and uh, the inheritance of my friend and her brother. Um, you know, his was a smaller percentage, but he went to all the right schools, so he had access to those people. And they saw what was to, to come about. And I'm not sure. I think he left DuPont as an executive because he wanted to follow this dream. And you know, I think it's something that should be reinvestigated, what exactly happened to the shrimp business and the viruses, and the virus that got the, the shrimp just on that season when they could have made the turn. Uh, Dean Lauren has a lot to say, being the son of a biowarfare scientist, about what you can do with viruses. But in any case, he, he lost the business. He lost $15 million of investors' money. And he... Um, you know, sort of retired. He's an older man now. However, today, the shrimp business is a multi-billion dollar business. So all of what he pioneered was not to no avail. In the same way, those people who were inspired by me to invest in telecommunications in China, I will say that I tromped around India for four years, really mostly, because I was living off the difference of what I could rent out my Gramercy Park apartment and what it cost me. And later on, because I was in a co-op and I don't really own it, the board came down really swift, hard, and heavy on me. And I had to come rushing home. And if it wasn't for uh, Molly helping me out, I probably would have lost it entirely. Right now, Molly's trying to get a book out about our adventures. She'd really like to, to get the 60000 back that she's lent me to keep this going. I've got this IRS thing looming over me because my ex-husband took a refund check of $30,000 that I didn't know about. So when I did my year's taxes after the windfall, it, it looked like, um, I mean, I was shocked when the accountant said, you owe $30,000. I said, it's impossible because we carefully calculated how many shares to sell before it went into the charity. And, and let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, most charities are about saving tax money. It's not really about going out and giving some part of yourself in order to make a difference. Now, I know you're so rattled and you're so confused about where to put your charity money because you hear about all of the decadence that goes on in, in most of the charities. I mean, when you've got Bill Gates and Warren Buffett giving each other billions of dollars for charity, I mean, it, what does it mean? I know that whenever I've made attempts to, to get some grants, it's never worked. So I believe to just sort of go back to the old drawing board and do it yourself. So let me make a comment on what you saw with the Howard Stern group that are well taken care of by the corporate media, or they've created their own corporation or their own little niche because they figured, oh, you know, heck with you guys, we've got our own satellite. But you guys, pay attention, pay attention to the directed energy weapons that were involved with the World Trade Center, because even Webster Tarpley talked about how the Chinese were able to bring down one of their own satellites. And he said maybe they did it by bringing a satellite next to it and, and exploding that satellite, and then the other one went down. Because I said, but Webster, if you can direct an energy beam up at a satellite, I mean, why can't you do the same thing for the World Trade Center? And so he said, well, the World Trade Center is so much bigger. So Nico Haupt is 1,000% correct. 9-11 truth is a cult. And the caveat is, I have been in so many cults, and I have gained from them. I'm not remorseful, like Nico Haupt is practically suicidal, figuring he's never going to get his, his, 
you know, his soul back because of this experience. I studied with a miracle master in India who said, nothing is wasted. And Gurdjieff used to say, make use of everything. So when this uh, video, these three videos came my way, and only a few have seen them, so I say I honor the, um, the respect and the trust that's been given to me to, to blow it my way, and I'm trying to do my best with it. I don't know if I should be putting it on Manhattan Neighborhood Network. Obviously, I'll have to edit out even more than I've tried to edit out here. Or if I should put it up on its entirety on YouTube, fly into the radar and see what happens there, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know what the fair use laws are. Uh, along with the fair use means that you should be able to take any image that's in the uh, collective psyche, you know, it's these, these icons, these images are affecting our consciousness. And if we can't have discussions among ourselves, uh, we can so easily fall victim to how they want to influence and sway us. So my final commentary is, look who actually, I mean, I mean let's, let's go back to the dog um, example. When, when dogs get together, that's what they do. They sniff each other. You know, they check each other out. And so for all of those shamans out there, we can look on this as, as sort of a, a, sh a shamanic act of, um, you know, getting to know each other, who we are. And uh, boy, would I love to go more deeply into this. Even Nico Haupt's t-shirt, talk about Catherine the Great. How many of you viewers out there know some of Catherine the Great's tendencies or, or tastes? But you know, upon further reflection, how much of that is, uh, some kind of COINTEL operation that wanted to bring Catherine the Great down, so they said that you know she could only have sex with bulls. And God, maybe I remembered hearing, but it might not be right, that the scaffolding broke and that was the demise of Catherine the Great. But in any case, look at the two people on that, those, those three videos who actually went and did the dastardly deed. They were Jewish. And so to me that means that somewhere running within them is some heartbreak that's so enormous that they would go to such extremes that they would do something like that. Something that I know Jenaba wouldn't do, and I could see Robin, the partner of Howard Stern, she's in her airtight compartment behind there, totally protected, and I don't blame her for, for claiming her space. I often feel that African Americans are like uh, fallen royalty because, you know, whenever Jenaba stays at my place, I'm the one that does the washing and the cooking. I mean, because, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm not saying this begrudgingly, I push people around me to the limit. So I want to take care of them. And when they come and stay with me and I bring in this huge high energy with these extraordinary ideas, uh, I feel it's my responsibility to, uh, to, pe to keep people as comfortable as possible under the circumstances. I have shown to you over the past few weeks, some people have been my guests, and at least one of them, if not more, are homeless. And they are huge contributors to society. And I hope to find more people so that I can tell you at that time, look at what this person is contributing, and look at our institutions, how we're taking care, care or not taking care of them. So if you know, you could see the Italian guy there, the big fat guy that's the construction worker. You know, he was, he was very upset. Uh, the young, beautiful Jewish writer, she is just racking her brains to, to, to come up with something that will, that will be catchy. On one of my YouTube comments, it, it, it referred to the Howard Stern group as gangsters. And I'm wondering if that has something to do with the investments that people have made, the stock that they've bought in this. And having been there where people have mistrusted, you know, what I got them involved with, my heart goes out in, in that way to those who, who had the idea to take Howard Stern to the satellite. But let me tell you, the bottom line is we're all in this together, whether we think we can take our media out to a satellite and be protected from the censors. I did hear from people that I trusted that Howard Stern is even better now that he's on Sirius, that he has his own thing, he can be more himself. I've also heard that about 90% of what he does is very banal, but about 5%, I don't know where the extra 5% is, is very right on. He manages to target a vast audience with ideas that are greater. 
and i think that's the idea of the chosen people that they have a responsibility for being chosen when abraham made a deal with god a deal that he needed some collateral for he was so earnest about it and what was given to him in return was uh, was was another deal and part of it is is that if you're the chosen people you can never grumble that someone is ignorant because if their if their ignorance is causing them to do violence and if you have knowledge indeed the first aspect of that knowledge is that you have to share it and the way things have gone where people only want to be entertained and even their charity has to be entertaining it has to feel right it has to feel warm and fuzzy and wonderful uh, that means that you're going to need those with courage and that's what these two Jewish people did Howard, Howard Stern and Sarah Silverman I think when they went and they smelled the balls of, of Richard who is known to some of my Manhattan Neighborhood Network audience as Rusty he would do the prank call so I think I've just about worn myself out, probably you, so I'll call this a wrap. Even though the tape hasn't run out yet, uh, it's probably pretty soon to running out. And I'll tell you, let's keep the faith with the internet, and oh yes, it's just for variety's sake. I want to make a comment about rabbitholecentral.tv it's got the unholy up and Nico Haupt at first was kind of excited about that because he thought it it showed the the ridiculousness of a lot of the 9-11 truth and the ridiculousness of a lot of uh, sexual exploitation but he said he'd never watch it more than once um, Commando 11 definitely helped me with um, you know certain media things but I think he got he sort of lost interest so what I'm going to have to do is learn web skills myself. And I want to do that because I'm the kind of person that follows energy. If I'm awake at 3 o'clock in the morning, I don't fret about, you know, being um, in menopause. I just get up and do something. So I want to have the skills so in the middle of the night if I get an inspiration and I wake up, I can change the website. And the reason that the stream isn't going on at 12 noon is because it's not Mac compatible. Don't blame every cast when you go to my website.